context of an industrial strength language that has tons of libraries out there where you don't have to write all of the programs yourself and other people can write them for you, right? That is things that you can learn from and take back to Trellis, to Agda, to, to Idris, to other dependently typed languages. And I really would like to see that information flow both directions. Right, and we've seen it, right? Type classes going into Agda and Clock. Right, that's, a, that's an example of where things that really work out nicely in Haskell go to, go to other dependently typed languages. So I have a question about your, uh, the types. Uh, so it's, a, it's the, the cool question that, that Andrew asked. Uh -huh. So he, he wondered if you couldn't write hidden tree with only one constructor. Yes. I wonder if you cannot write almost with two constructors and then not have the singleton type or the type family at all. I'm sure you could. I wanted to show type families. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and again, actually, this is the code. Almost tree, I got it from Dan. So I, I wanted to show type families. It came from some active code already. It seemed like a reasonable thing to do. Okay. Right? Again, there's many, many different ways to write these programs. Thanks. So you've shown us how to uh, make Haskell more and more like Agda. Uh -huh. But if you want to program an Agda, you know, there's a way of doing that. <laughs> oh, <there> so, is. <laughs> so, apart from the small matter of two decades of compiler development, let's ignore that. <laughs> I take it that one of the, the benefits that you see from the work of the into Haskell is that you get a dependently typed language with some other useful properties. Now, you identify not needing to show totality, and you showed us that um, you, know, you could reduce the size of the code substantially because of that. Can you just point out other places where you see Haskell, rather than Agda, bring something useful to dependently type programming? And I'm not allowed to talk about two decades of compiler research. <laughs> apart from that, right? That's good. But apart from that, and significant ecosystem, large user base. Um, a wealth of other features, quick check. <laughs> so here's one suggestion, erasure, just exploring what it means to be very consistent about yeah. erasure. Right, so there's, there's some pain, but there's some benefit. So that's right. a... Uh, what Simon reminded us of is that Haskell has a story about erasure, right? And that, and it's one story, but it's a really nice exploration of how do we keep track of what we need at runtime and what we, what is only there to prove properties. Um, yes. Yeah, so thank you for the for a wonderful talk. Um, so I may be able to have a variant of the previous question. So. Setting aside the two decades of compiler research, one, one thing I actually like a lot about uh, Haskell is that the type inference is much, much, much more robust than, than say, Agda. Um, but as we, as we add these features, we need some sort of story for, for you know, continuing to type check our programs and knowing when, a, uh, uh, knowing when things will, will make it keeping inference predictable and also keeping Haskell from being an implementation-defined language. So do you have any thoughts about that? I agree with you completely, but I also agree that it's a lot of work, right? And maybe ICFP 2015 was a little bit ambitious for solving all of these problems, but I, it's definitely the area, that is definitely the direction of research we should be looking at. Okay, so time for one last question. <laughs> uh, Fritz Ruhr, uh, Willamette University, and I want to ask about uh, type-driven development and uh, pedagogy. And I guess my question is, uh, red black trees might normally come into uh, the curriculum in, say, a data structures course, uh, or you know, if you're teaching functional first, uh, maybe you get as early as a uh, as first semester, depending. Uh, but at what level do you expect that you would be able to use? Uh, these sorts of ideas and you know successfully to help students do type driven development of this kind with red black trees I'm assuming you know perhaps not necessarily the PhD level but you know have you have you used this in teaching this particular example or I where actually, does that happen? I actually have used my simpler example of red black trees in my my advanced programming course which is targeted toward uh, seniors and master students but it does get advanced students as young as sophomores in that class. 
Okay, so let's thank Stephanie again for very much.